A local organization is celebrating Disability History and Awareness Month in a very big way. Yeah, the 16th annual Accessibility Fest in Hemisphere Park today promoted independence and inclusion for those with disabilities. As Jonathan Cotto shows us, it's all in an effort to change and redefine how people think about disabilities. And we are out here just to celebrate one segment of diversity of the San Antonio community, and that is the disability community here today. The Disability Pride Parade kicking off the Accessibility Fest this year. Disability SA, an organization whose mission is to create an inclusive community where people with a disability can live, work, and more importantly, play, say one in seven people in San Antonio live with a disability. Being able to experience an inclusive and wonderful opportunity to just be able to have that, that outlet to independence, to find more independence and overcome those barriers that they face every day. This is one way today's event is making sure kids like Gabriel are included by highlighting their ability and not their disability. Gabriel was born at 29 weeks, was in the neonatal ICU for six weeks and was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. But his mom says nothing gets in the way of having fun. We love Gabriel being included in these events because he's such a special kid. He was just enjoying the rock wall because we want to give him those experiences. I've never even been rock climbing and now he has. And although Gabriel mastered his rock climb, his interests are a bit more aquatic. Wow, well, one of my favorite things to do is um, swim in the pool. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. A San Antonio teen is getting a lot of stares after showing off her massive mom. Take a look at it. This is ahead of her homecoming game. Moms, of course, a Texas homecoming tradition enjoyed by high school students across the state. Hannah Tice is a senior at Veterans Memorial High School. A family friend made the mom for her, and apparently it took three weeks to put it all together. Mums can range in cost from $20 to more than $500. So the question is, how much do you all think that that one costs? I have no idea. I didn't even know what a mum was when I moved to Texas. I know. I Yeah. I'm now more well acquainted. Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty big deal for home. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Did well, you ever have a mum that large? Not that big. <laughs> Senior year, I had a pretty decent sized mum. You got to go all out for go the final year of the last okay. one. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't that big. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> very impressive. So have our mornings. They've yes. also been very impressive. Pretty. Nice and cool. We warm up in the afternoons. Only complaint is no rain. Exactly. And unfortunately, we don't have high hopes for any big rain chances as we gear up for the upcoming week. So until then, let's just enjoy some of that drier air in the mornings. Take a look at those morning lows across South Central Texas earlier today. Again, 59 officially over at the airport here in San Antonio. 53 was that wake up temperature up in Kerrville. 60 out in Uvalde. It was 58 earlier this morning in Pleasanton. Again, we had beautiful sunshine. Plenty of blue skies for as far as the eyes could see out there today, helping those temperatures warm into the mid to upper 80s. Good thing is we didn't have a heat index value because of that drier air in place. Temperatures cooling down pretty efficiently here late tonight. 72 in San Antonio, upper 60s up in Kerrville, 76 in Hondo as of the hour. And we are still plenty calm out there, but a much different story out in the far eastern Pacific. This is Hurricane Orlean. Latest information in from the National Hurricane Center, currently a Category 2 storm. This is going to continue to slightly strengthen here over the next 24 hours, likely making landfall along the southern portions of the Mexico coastline on Monday before it weakens rapidly and really gets torn apart thanks to the high elevations and ragged terrain of that region. But we are expecting to see some upper level moisture from that system be pulled farther up to the north as well as the east. Now, unfortunately, not really expecting any rain from that system, but notice here we are going to see that high level cloud cover move in really through the overnight hours tonight. That is with us for the back half of the weekend's plans could thicken up just a little bit more, especially throughout the first half of the upcoming work week. Really, we are expecting some of those mid to upper level clouds to be with us in some way, shape or form each day going forward into next week. But the good news is, at least here at the surface, we still do have relatively drier air in place before a slight uptick in some of those humidity values as we head into the second.
second half of the work week, but because of those lower humidity values over the next few days, still going to feel plenty pleasant and very fall like when you do step out early in the morning. So again, here's your Sunday morning waking up in the 50s for most a few low 60s possible, especially the farther south that you go. Plenty of warmth though as we head into the afternoons, very similar to what we saw out there today. Those temperatures climbing into the mid to maybe a few upper 80s filtered sunshine again, no heat index value. So that is the good news there. We're in the low 80s as we head into the early afternoon hours here in San Antonio. We've got a forecast high around 86 with the southeast wind on hand at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. More of the same in stores. We head into the upcoming work week, but again, as we start to see just a slight uptick in some of those humidity values, those temperatures in the morning, especially by Wednesday and into Thursday, a little bit closer to the average for this time of year. Still plenty pleasant, though. Temperatures rebounding into the mid to upper 80s, even approaching 90 as we head into the second half of the work week. And again, I wish we had better news in terms of those rain chances. Most of us will stay dry into the upcoming week. Boy, though, we really could use it. Latest drought monitor update showing that this was released on Thursday. We still do have extreme to even exceptional drought in place near the San Antonio Metro, reaching up I-35 as well. Most of our area still under some type of classified drought, so we will hope for a pattern change here pretty soon. Until then, we'll focus on the optimism. At least it'll still feel pretty good in the mornings and not too bad into the afternoons as well. I thought it was going to float up into the sky. I was so happy that it was cool this morning. It's just so pleasant. Absolutely. Amazing. Thanks, Mia. All right, Mia's uh, Aggies had a rough weekend yeah. this afternoon. Not so good. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys were talking about mums earlier. I know Aggies fans probably wish mum was the word on the game that happened today in Mississippi State. When we come back, we'll show you what went wrong for the Aggies against the Bulldogs including a mishap here on a field goal attempt. Plus, UTSA riding high after a rare Friday win. Got that too next. UTSA fans have a rare chance to sit back and relax on a Saturday. The Roadrunners defeated Middle Tennessee on Friday night, 45 to 30, to move above 500 for the first time this season. Quarterback Frank Harris was the star of the show again, breaking his own school record for passing yards in a single game that he set last week with a whopping 414 passing yards and four total touchdowns. He also became UTSA's all-time leading passer. Overall, head coach Jeff Trailer says this performance was just what the team needed. They're finally happy. I mean, it's the first time, even after Army, uh, they weren't just real happy. And I hate that, man. When, we, when you work as hard as our guys work, and uh, I'm just so happy there's a happy locker room. There's real joy in the locker room, and they've been through hell. They have been through hell, but I think that tough schedule uh, had us ready for tonight. And uh, we, we should get some kids back soon, uh, I expect. Uh, this is going to be like a, a bye week for us to get Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and we'll get rolling again Tuesday for a very good Western Kentucky team. The Roadrunners nearly put this game away much earlier in the fourth quarter, but this pick six from Trevor Harmonson was called back by a ridiculous roughing the passer call. Quarterback Chase Cunningham was tapped on the helmet and then tripped over his own lineman, and somehow UTSA was flagged. Many are saying it's one of the worst calls they've ever seen. Luckily, it didn't cost the Roadrunners the game. Meanwhile, UIW returned home this evening to host McNeese State. The Cardinals wasted little time marching down the field on their opening drive. Quarterback Lindsey Scott keeps it himself right up the middle for the seven-yard touchdown, and UIW leads seven to nothing a little under three minutes into the game. Later in the quarter, defense comes up big. Darius Richmond pressures the quarterback, knocks the ball free. Ricky Rich is right there to pounce on it. Huge takeaway gives the Cardinals a short field. And they capitalize. Guess who? Scott again barrels over a defender and dives in for another seven yard score. That makes it 14 nothing UIW. Scott has seven touchdowns in the Cardinals roll 48 to 20. Some more local scores to pass along. Texas State falls to James Madison on the road 40 to 13. In Division 3, Trinity stays undefeated with a 28 7 win over Hendricks. And TLU gets their first win of the season on the road against North American University 45 17. Texas A&M played in a hostile environment in Mississippi State, and they did little to silence the hometown Cowbells. Late third quarter, Aggies attempting a field goal down 14-3, but Emmanuel Forbes blocks the kick, and then Camarion Richardson is on the other way for a 50-yard touchdown return. Bulldogs lead 21-10 at halftime. 
Pick it up now in the fourth quarter. Aggies trying to rally with Haynes King now in place of the injured Max Johnson. Kings find some space for the four yard touchdown here. That makes it 28 to 17. But the rest of the quarter turned into another nightmare. King throws his second pick of the game to Forbes, who somehow stays in bounds and takes it back 33 yards for a pick six. Bulldogs route the Aggies 42 24. Big 12 action now. Texas Tech on the road this afternoon against Kansas State. Late third quarter, Red Raiders down by seven. Donovan Smith slings it to Xavier White, who sneaks in for the 12-yard touchdown, and we're all tied at 20. But the Wildcats take over from there. Adrian Martinez takes off on a QB keeper right up the middle for a 69-yard touchdown run. He scores three TDs on the day, and K-State tops Tech 37-28. Number 16, Baylor hosted number 9, Oklahoma State. Third quarter, Bears down 33-17. Blake Shapin threads the needle to Monterey Baldwin, and he sprints away from defenders for a 70-yard touchdown. That makes it a one-possession game, but... Baylor would get no closer. Shapen throws two picks in the fourth quarter, and the Bears fall 36-25. How about this? 3-0 TCU taking on number 18 Oklahoma, and the Horn Frogs torch the Sooners. Late first half, Max Duggan finds Gunnar Henderson wide open downfield. He cuts back for a 62-yard score. Duggan threw for 302 yards, ran for 116, and accounted for five total touchdowns. TCU stuns the Sooners 55-24. And how about Kansas knocking off Iowa State 14-11? Coming up later in sports, Texas got a much needed bounce back win against West Virginia. Plus, big game coverage featuring Reagan and Roosevelt. Guys, it is weird to say we are over halfway through the high school football regular season. It's even weird to say that Kansas is undefeated. Yeah, that's in wild. Football. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. We'll see you again a little bit later. All right. The idea of robots being the future is looking to come true, perhaps. How this car manufacturer plans to utilize its new tech. And a local grocery store has some work to do after dropping nearly 20 points in their recent health inspection score. It's just one of the places I stopped by this week as I went behind the kitchen door. A convenience store ordered to stop selling pickles and pizza, a tavern full of flies and serving tongs covered in mold. Just a few of the violations cited by health inspectors after recent visits to San Antonio food businesses. It's this week's Behind the Kitchen Door. First up on our tour of culinary miscues this week, Umark Grocery located in the 2100 block of Castroville Road. They got a 76 on their inspection last month, which was a big drop from their previous inspection in March of this year when they earned a 95. So what happened? Food in the fridge was too warm. There was no certified food manager on duty and the person serving pizzas didn't have a food handler permit. Ice bags weren't properly labeled and there was only one set of tongs for three containers of pickles when each one needs its own tongs. And the walk-in cooler was in need of a top to bottom cleaning. The business was ordered to immediately stop bagging ice, selling pickles and preparing pizzas until the violations were corrected following a reinspection. <laughs> Insects were a problem for Brickhouse Tavern and Tap Restaurant in the 1000 block of Loop 1604 on the north side. The inspector observed live flying insects on food contact surfaces and a significant flying insect presence throughout the business. The buggy problem tied to air curtains at the bar area windows. The inspector also noted mold found on produce in the cooler, ice scoops stored on a dirty surface and dust collecting around AC vents. He gave the business an 82 and ordered a reinspection. Walters Food Mart in the 2100 block of Burnett Street got an 83. They had violations for a deli cooler that was too warm and tongs next to a pickle jar were soiled with food and mold. The hand washing sink was serving as a personal storage area. It was full of plates, open drinks, glasses, deodorant and alcohol. But there were no paper towels. There were dead bugs and other debris found in the cold hold units for food and a drain in the deli cooler had a vast amount of mold and algae buildup. The owner told the inspector the kitchen is no longer in use. All right, want to know who has good scores and who doesn't? Well, we have a tool for that. Just scan this QR code with your phone. It'll take you to our mapping tool where we have all the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back about six months and we frequently update them. International news now, at least 129 people are dead and at least 180 people in, are injured after a stampede at a soccer match in Indonesia. 
Officials there say several brawls between supporters of the two rival soccer teams after the match ended. Supporters of the losing team invaded the field. Police fired tear gas, which led to a crowd stampede. Hundreds of people ran to an exit gate trying to avoid the gas. Some people were suffocated in the chaos while others were trampled. More than 300 people were rushed to nearby hospitals. Well, Vladimir Putin's provocative land grab in Ukraine suddenly declaring four Ukrainian regions are now Russian territory. President Zelensky responding to the news by saying he's ready to talk to Russia when Russia has a new president. The death toll from a Russian missile strike on a convoy of civilian cars is in the south is now rising to 30, including two children. But just as Russia illegally claims ownership of eastern Ukraine, Ukrainian forces are on the advance there, taking it back. Ukraine is threatening to surround a strategically important city, Le Mans. Five Americans will be coming back to the United States after being detained in Venezuela for the past several years. President Biden making that announcement today. Those five Americans are oil executives who were arrested more than four years ago. They were all accused of signing an agreement that was not favorable to Venezuela. These releases come just a few months after two Americans from the same group were released from Venezuela. In exchange for the releases, two Venezuelans who were imprisoned in the U.S. will now be released. Back here at home, the CDC is warning of a listeria outbreak connected to cheese. More than 20 brands of cheese have been recalled as a result. The CDC says illnesses were reported here in Texas, as well as California, Georgia, Georgia and New Jersey, just to name a few. The recall includes brie and camembert cheese sold between August 1st and September 28th across the U.S. and Mexico. A total of six illnesses were reported and five people have been hospitalized. Luckily, no deaths have been reported. Also in consumer news, introducing Optimus, Elon Musk's long-anticipated humanoid robot. Take a look. Musk and the Tesla team unveiling the robot at Tesla's 2022 AI Day, the 5'8 prototype, walking on stage, waving to the audience, and even busting a move. The robot running with the same hardware as Tesla's autopilot system for its vehicles, fully equipped with advanced human-like qualities. He predicts that this new robotic future where, where there's not many human employees, the profits from that and the, and the, the, the type of ec economic activity that will be produced from that will be so great that governments and other entities will be able to afford to actually pay humans to basically do nothing. The release of this long anticipated humanoid ro robot uh, comes just four months after Tesla announced it's cutting 10% of its salaried staff. The company later clarified that its hourly staff is expected to grow, meaning the total cutbacks would only be about three and a half percent. All right, a woman looking for a job ahead of the holidays, scammed out of thousands of dollars. What you need to know to protect yourself if you're gonna be looking for a job too. All right, we've got a scam alert for you now with the holidays coming up. People are starting to look for some of that seasonal work out there, and cyber criminals are also looking to take advantage. Yeah, they're offering fake jobs. One college student tells 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz how scammers emptied her bank account, and it all started with a text. Elizabeth Gray searched online for a job for weeks. This one found her. I just got a text message from a person claiming to be a textile company up in Chicago. It was a legit construction company and it seemed perfect. A remote data entry job paying $37 an hour. I never got like a phone call. They just did everything in text. They even interviewed her over a Google chat app and they moved fast. They're like, oh, we're so impressed with um, your resume that we're going to give you a job immediately. We're going to send you all the equipment. Except they didn't send equipment. They actually sent me checks to buy the equipment. Two checks totaling about $10,000, which Elizabeth deposited into her bank account. Then came another twist. Okay, we need you to send money to this vendor on Cash App Venmo. When peer-to-peer -peer payment apps didn't work, Elizabeth was told to wire the money. Then she heard from her bank. Those checks were fake. You have no money left. Your savings is com completely gone. And you now owe the bank like 
$2,000. The Better Business Bureau urges job hunters to verify online job offers and beware instant hiring, interviews by messaging app, and requests for payment. Anything they're asking for you that involves a financial transaction, a Zelle payment, a cash app, digital wallet, peer-to-peer -peer situation, um, that's the new trend now. Elizabeth says she should have known better, so how did she fall for it? One word. Desperation. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, as much as we love these lower temperatures, mm -hmm. we do need the rain still. We, we got to keep it top of the mind. Absolutely. Yeah, it's no secret that this year has not been particularly kind to us in the rainfall department. Let's take a look at some of the stats just from September. Really, all in all here in San Antonio, officially, we only recorded just under an inch of rain, which is about three inches below what we actually should have recorded for the month of September, which is one of our wettest months in a given year. Now, year to date from January 1st to October 1st, 2022 is in the lead for the driest year that we have on record here in San Antonio to date with just over eight inches recorded this year, followed by 1917 and then of course 2011, which we know to be a very dry year here in South Central Texas, just over seven inches only up in New Braunfels for the year. So far, Del Rio just shy of 13 inches, uh, over 13 inches out in Medina for the year. But of course, we definitely still need a whole lot more. And again, latest drought monitor does show that with that extreme to even exceptional drought still in place near the San Antonio Metro, stretching farther up to the north up I-35, severe to moderate drought in place from the Edwards Plateau reaching down to the Rio Grande Plains there. And again, still don't have really any significant rain chances in the forecast into the upcoming work week. So fingers crossed that we do find a shift in our weather pattern here pretty soon as we head into the month of October and really gearing up for the winter months as well. But until then, we are dry and we are quiet out there late this Saturday night. 72 over at the airport, a very calm wind on hand. Again, those dew points, how we measure that moisture in the atmosphere much lower, so still dry out there and that's why those temperatures are cooling down pretty efficiently here tonight as well. Already upper 60s Rio Medina stretching up to Bandera up to Kerrville along I-10 as well. 72 again here in town upper 60s out in Stinson through the overnight. Those temperatures fall into the 50s for most a couple of low 60s possible as well. We're near about 81 by lunchtime. That forecast high pointed around 86 here in San Antonio. The biggest difference tomorrow compared to the weather conditions that we found out there today. Those high clouds that move in from a tropical system, not Ian. This is the remnants of what was Hurricane Ian. You can see still producing some rain across portions of the mid Atlantic, but actually from what is now Hurricane Orlean. Again, this is in the far eastern Pacific. It is expected to make landfall along the southern coastline of Mexico on Monday, but this then it is torn apart thanks to the mountainous terrains out that way. We just see some of that upper level moisture be filtered across the sky farther up to the northeast. That's why we are expecting some of those high level clouds to move in to our area as we head into the upcoming work week. But it is still plenty dry here at the surface, so that's why we still do have those fall like mornings in place. Once again, heading into our Sunday a little bit cooler across the hill country as what we've seen the past several mornings. Some low 60s possible the farther south as well as west that you go and then into the afternoon. We see those temperatures warm up pretty seasonable for this time of year near average 86 here in San Antonio a forecast high of 88 out in Pleasanton 89 in Catula 83 up in Kerrville. More of the same is in store as we head into next week. Temperatures ever so slightly warming just a bit each day a touch more humidity works in by Wednesday and into Thursday. So those overnight lows not as cool as what we're expecting to find out there tomorrow, but still nice near average as well. Yeah, we'll take that. Absolutely. No complaints over here. <laughs> Thanks, Mia.
The Mountaineers of West Virginia are looking for a country road to take them home tonight after the Longhorns handled their business up in Austin. <laughs> that was a bit of a country that road hike to well get to that one. Yeah, yeah, that that and they, I'm happy because we won, so it's fine. I was going to say, Courtney's <laughs> happy, Mia's not. It's one of those days, right? Longhorns got a big bounce back win. Hudson Card played particularly well, and so did Xavier Worthy. When we come back, we'll show you what specifically happened. Plus, we had a catch of the week candidate in Reagan versus Lee. Got that too. Next. Texas Longhorns returned home to DKR, looking to bounce back from last week's overtime loss to the Red Raiders. Pick it up in the first quarter. Longhorns already up 7-0. Hudson Card laterals back to Xavier Worthy, who goes deep for a wide open Jatavion Sanders. That's a 33-yard touchdown, and Texas leads 14-0 after one. Second quarter now up 21-0. Card slings it to Sanders himself this time for a 13-yard score. Texas heads into halftime with a 28-7 lead, and they start the second half with authority. This time, Card caps a five-play, 70-yard drive with this pass to the end zone. It gets tipped, and it's still caught by a diving worthy for a touchdown. Texas cruises to a big win, 38-20. The Rattlers are ready for big game coverage on Saturday afternoon. Reagan taking on Lee at Comalander Stadium. After the defense forces a volunteer fumble on the opening drive, Rattlers find the end zone. Caleb Capuccio dumps it off for Carson Green, and he races in for the six-yard touchdown. That makes it 7-0. Next Reagan possession, offense stays hot. This time a double fake. Capuccio goes deep for Michael Izaguerri, who just goes up and gets it. Dang, you just got Moss. Huge first down, sets up first and goal at the five-yard line. Next play goes backwards. This one goes the distance. Direct snap to Cole Pryor. He outruns everybody to the pylon for the 14-yard score. It's 14-0 Rattlers, and Reagan goes on to win it big, 55-10. Over at Hero Stadium, Roosevelt taking on Churchill. Early second quarter, Rough Riders trailing 3-0. Not for long. Handoff goes to Brennan Carroll. He eludes one tackle, picks up some blocks on the outside, and he is off to the races. A 70-yard touchdown run puts Roosevelt up 7-3. to three. three touchdowns on the day for Carroll, and the Rough Riders win it 22-16, improving to 2-2 two two in district. Some other scores to pass along for you. Brooks Academy beats Laredo St. Augustine 73-25 to today, and DeHennis takes down Charlotte at home 21-6. to How about some volleyball now? Antonian at home taking on Houston Incarnate Word. Apache's rolling in the second set. Jada Daniels gets the push shot to fall in midcourt. That is a nice shot. And Antonian takes the second set 25 to 7. Third set's pretty close early on until this. Jaden Levanway calls her own number with a dump shot for an 8-6 lead. And that gets the home team going because the Apaches close on a 17 to 1 run. Desiree Camargo over to Kalina Calvillo for a thunderous spike. Antonian cruises to a convincing sweep. Three sets to none. Final round of district play in high school. Water polo this afternoon at Northside. Clark boys in the water taking on on Brandeis. First half is back and forth. Broncos trailing by two. Not anymore. Jack Goldhammer over to Jason Manzo, who just sneaks it inside the near post. Brandeis on a two-goal run. They now trail four to three, but Clark answers back late in the period. Charles Samuel III over to Tristan Clark, and he has a perfect chip shot over the keeper and in. Cougars lead five to three at halftime. They win it 13 to six. In the North Pool, Marshall taking on health careers. Rams start red hot in this one. Reed Rinchy with a long pass ahead to Maximilian Lagucic, who corrals it, whips around, and fires it past the keeper. That makes it two nothing. Marshall. A few plays later, Max returns the favor, finding Reed battling in front of the net for another goal. 4 0 start for the Rams in this one, and they go on to take it 15 to 8. San Antonio FC on the road tonight, taking on the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. This one scoreless until the 86th minute of the play. Carter Manley plays hero in this one, scoring the game winner by redirecting a shot off of his heel. What a goal. SAFC wins it 1-0, and they have now clinched home field advantage throughout the playoffs. One final note before we go. Today is Larry Ramirez's birthday, and my gift to him is that he doesn't have to deal with me today. Well, that's very nice. We don't have to deal with him either. Exactly. <laughs> Happy birthday, Larry. Happy birthday, Larry, wherever you are. <laughs> Probably we'll right traveling now. up to Dallas. Our producer Alexis didn't save us any time to tell you something good, <laughs> so we'll just have to say good night. The good news is we'll be back tomorrow. Catch GMSA tomorrow starting at 6.